Hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for the third part of the What Matters Most series, in which I'm testing all the components of a car to find out which one matters most to a car's one lap pace. In this case, it's a Honda NSX around Laguna Seca. Last time we saw the effect tyres had on the NSX, and it was enormous. The gap was a staggering 20.2 seconds a lap from the worst tyres in the game, the economy tyres, to the best ones which were the racing super softs or the racing qualifying tyres, although that did exclude each tyre's endurance. However, we also saw how much of a difference tyres made to the braking distances and cornering speeds, which was also unbelievable. Anyway, this time is the turn of nitrous, or nitrous oxide to give it its proper name. Now we saw that tyres had an unbelievable effect on lap times, 20.2 seconds from the best to the worst, but can nitrous be more effective than that? Well let's find out. Well I can tell you that nitrous definitely has an effect on the car's straight line speed, and I'll prove this through Top Gear. Yes, many years ago we saw modify an old 250 quid Jag with nitrous and put it in the drag race against supercars such as our Honda NSX, a Porsche 911 Turbo and a Ferrari 360 and the Jag beat all of them. So if Nitrous can do that much to a rusty Jag, how much can it do to an already quick car? Well that's what I'm here to find out. So firstly let's take a look at Nitrous in the game. It only costs 5,000 credits which is a bargain when considering that the racing super softs cost nearly 10 times as much at 47,500 credits. So already things are looking good for Nitrous and how good of a purchase it is. Now the second thing is how to set it up. You can set it up so that the Nitrous's duration is increased, but the extra power it provides is reduced. So let's check it out on three settings. 10, which is the lowest setting and is aimed at maximum duration. 40, which is the standard setting. And 70, which is aimed at maximum speed, but a very poor duration. So you can think of Nitrous as how Curse was in F1. And that is because you don't have to have nitrous on all the time. It's only when you press a button is when it's on. As you can see on the car's display, right at the rev counter is that red bar. And that red bar represents how much nitrous you have. And when that red bar is empty, your nitrous runs out and isn't refilled until the next event. So firstly, we've got to remember that the standard time for the series is 1 minute 39.7. And secondly, that the tyres we used last episode will not be used here. And instead we will only be using the standard sports mediums, like use of the standard time in the series, to get an accurate reflection of how much of an effect Nitrous has on the standard car. So on to the lap times of the Nitrous, and the first lap we'll see the Nitrous set on the 10 setting, which gives us the least speed boost. And to be honest guys, when driving I actually didn't feel much of a difference, and I didn't even know if it was working to be honest but you can tell it's working thanks to this distinctive hissing sound. Although what didn't feel like it was working, it was making a difference, albeit a small one because it improved the lap time by two tenths of a second. However, you will notice that the red bar upon finishing the lap still has lots of nitrous left, so I thought I'd take the car out again and see how long the nitrous can last on this setting and bearing in mind I'm applying the nitrous every time I want to straight so I was being really greedy with it and on the fifth lap yes the fifth lap on the same tank of nitrous being used constantly I was able to set a lap time of 138 dead the reason for this big improvement is probably the fact I got used to the changing and braking distances from the increased speed I was taking down the straights as nitrous can really mess with your judgement on the brakes, as we'll see later on. Anyway, finally the tank ran out, and hissing finally stopped, thank god, on the run up towards the corkscrew on the 6th lap. So in short, nitrous, even on the lowest setting, can improve your lap time by 1.7 seconds, and obviously as this is on the lowest setting, it can do just over 5.5 laps of Laguna Seca. And that wasn't even using the nitrous conservatively, and I was using it the whole time I was on a straight. But 5.5 laps equals out at 12.1 miles of non-stop nitrous. And that means over the course of 5.5 laps, you'd be 9.3 seconds better off than if you didn't have nitrous at all. Which is highly impressive for something which is also used medically as well. So on to the nitrous when set to the standard setting of 40. So now, because it is set to 40, it should be 4 times as powerful 
as it was in the last run. And the extra power I got from it being on a more powerful setting was astonishing. And this time I could actually feel the difference in power. And that showed in the lap time I set. So the Nitrous under 40 setting, I set a lap time of 136.3. Which is 1.7 seconds a lap faster than the Nitrous under 10 setting. And a further 1.7 seconds a lap faster than the standard lap time set with no Nitrous. So that is a big goal for the lap time. It does prove that Nitrous is worth having. Anyway, as you can tell, the time on the 40 setting is quicker, but that does mean that the endurance of the nitrous is reduced, much like with grippier tyres, more speed equals less duration, and that theory is proved right here. The nitrous on the 40 setting runs out of the same point as it did on the 10 setting, but instead after 1.5 laps, not 5.5 laps. That means that you only gain about 5.1 seconds before the nitrous runs out, um, compared to if you had no nitrous at all. So actually, over a longer distance, nitrous on the 10 setting is more beneficial than it was on the 40 setting. And if you want the full figures, or if you're a bit confused and you want to read over the figures yourself, then you can check them down in the description of this video. Now finally, we'll have the nitrous on the most powerful setting, which is the 70 setting. So this time you get maximum speed, but minimum duration. And on this setting, Night just gives you such a big boost in speed, it's absolutely insane. It almost felt like I had a really big turbo fit to the car. That's how much speed I was getting. On this setting though, I set an astonishing lap time of 134.499, which is 5.3 seconds faster than having no nitrous at all. And although the nitrous ran out just after I crossed the line, showing its poor endurance, Although I did use that night just throughout the whole lap, and if you used it a bit more conservatively, and only when it was needed, then it could be used as a massive boost to help you overtake people very easily in a race situation. But as it ran out after only completing one lap, that means you only gain 5.3 seconds over the course of the entire race. So pretty similar of a boost over the course of a race distance to that of the 40 setting, but with the Nitrous and the 10 setting give you an improvement of 9.3 seconds over a whole race distance, it does make you question which setting is best. Because sure, on the 10 setting you gain more lap time, but it doesn't really help you to overtake anyone due to how it doesn't boost you on a straight line speed that much. Whereas on the 40 or 70 setting, you can really feel the boost and it does really help you to easily overtake an opponent. So it is hard to tell you which setting to recommend, but I'm sure there is a happy medium, which gives you a good boost and endurance that is in between 10 and 70, I'm sure of it. But let's have a look at exactly how much nitrous improves your straight line speed by checking at the speed we cross the line when we finish each lap. So at the end of our standard lap time with no nitrous fitted, we crossed the start finish line at 100 miles an hour. So they expect an improvement when nitrous is fitted, even when it is only running on the 10 setting and you do get a difference, albeit only a small one, because this time with nitrous on the 10 setting we crossed the line at 101 miles per hour, so only a 1 mile per hour improvement on the standard speed. Then on the 40 setting there was a big gap, across the line we were going 110 miles an hour, showing that my feeling of getting a bigger boost in speed was in fact true due to how much more effective it is than when only using the 10 setting, and is why there was such a big reduction in duration of the nitrous. Then finally onto the speed of the nitrous on the 70 setting, and we were travelling at 118 miles an hour across the line. So another big improvement there, and shows just how much of a boost it gives you, and why it makes overtaking so much easier than on the pathetic 10 setting, where it gives you barely a measly boost to be honest, despite somehow improving lap time considerably. In fact, it could be down to the braking distances, as obviously you can brake later when travelling slower, so that could be behind the extra time gained, especially as such a big boost can throw off your perception of braking distances massively. Showing sure, these mistakes I made that I didn't make on the 10 setting, thanks to Nitrous on the 40 or 70 setting improving straight line speed so much, that it took a while for my brain to cope with the changes and braking needed. So 
So that showed how much of an effect the boost can have on braking and your perception of braking distances, and that's why the 10 setting is safer and easier to handle. But which is the best setting is down to the context and I suppose personal preference, and that's all the advice I can give you really on how to use nitrous effectively in racing. 70 and 40 give you a massive boost, but 10 is easier to judge braking distances. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then a like and a comment would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, I think it is staggering how much of an effect, albeit only temporary, Nitrous can have on lap times, with it giving a total improvement of 5.3 seconds a lap, than with it not being fitted at all, although that gain does only stand for one lap, because that's when the Nitrous runs out, at least on the 70 setting. But anyway, next time I'll be finding out how much of an effect the brakes have on the car's lap time, Considering there's been a lot of discussion about braking in this episode, and in fact the previous episode, so I feel it's apt to finally talk about the brakes and how they can improve your lap time for themselves. So I'll see you guys for that, and I'll see you then.